I want to say hi. My name is Whitney Nosley. I am the broker for Whitney Buys Houses. We are a firm, real estate firm in Tennessee and in Georgia. Uh, I'm also an auctioneer for Nicely Done Auctions, and I flip houses when I'm not busy. So uh, this should be a pretty good scope this morning. Uh, we've been talking two weeks ago. We talked about how to find houses, and we talked about sending out yellow letters and driving for dollars, and we talked about being mouthy. And y'all give me some hearts if you've started being more mouthy in your area and telling everybody that you know that you want to buy houses and you're looking for, you know, vacant houses or you're looking for uh, what's another type of house that you could be looking for you could be looking for houses that are currently rented that have landlords that don't want to be landlords anymore um, there's plenty of those houses out there I was talking with my wedding photographer the other day I had no idea but she owns a bunch of houses and she's tired of being a landlord and I thought well I'll buy it how much you want for it and our wedding photography session turned into a how can I buy your house type session so we flipped the table on her a little bit and that was fun uh, last week we talked about okay now that people are calling what are we gonna say when they call and you know the first thing we need to know is do you own the property what is the address how much are you asking does it need any repairs and how much do you think it would be worth after all of the repairs are done so we talked about that. You can ask them about the bedrooms and the bathrooms, and that may come into play, but not until this week. This week we're going to talk about how do I make an offer. And if you're making, if you're talking to three different sellers, then you're going to need uh, about three different offer strategies. So let's say that the, and I'll use round numbers because it's early and I haven't had any coffee yet. And you can just change these numbers to your market. So. Let's say that the first seller that you're dealing with, they have a house and they own it free and clear. They inherited it from grandpa. So now their family is growing. They need a bigger house. They want a new house and they've been approved. They're buying a new house and they just need to sell this old house. But your seller is pretty smart and he says, you know, if I sell this house, I'm going to have to pay a bunch of capital gains on it. And that may or may not be true, but let's assume that that's going to be true first, okay? So let's assume that your seller says, I hear that you do owner financing. Would you want to owner finance this house? Your answer is yes. When somebody says, do you want me to owner finance this? You answer yes. And if you don't know how to structure owner financing, you call me as soon as you leave because that's the goal. Owner financing, owner financing, owner financing is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. And somebody out there is giving me some hearts because they know how much owner financing is just fabulous. So if you can get owner financing, go for it. Um, if Jason is on here, my future husband, he's going to kill me because I passed up a really good owner financing deal earlier. But I live and I learn, do not pass up owner financing deals no matter what the situation is. Now you need to make sure that you get the right... Uh, payments, you get the right interest, you get the right price on the house, but for the most part, owner financing is the number one place to get. He's on here. Hey, Jason. Yes, I passed up a good opportunity. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm sorry. Um, owner financing is the best way to buy houses because think about it, guys. An owner is not going to run your credit. They are not going to um, file this with the world. Um, they will float you for 10, 15, 20 years and the banks won't know that. So that's two really good ways of looking at owner financing is that your credit does not come into play. It does not get dinged. You are still free to go and buy and get a mortgage on your own personal house. That's cool. Um, and the banks have laws and registration or rules that they have to follow right so they can only let you have a loan for either x amount of loans or x amount of dollars and once you hit that then the banks won't loan you any more money but if you have owner financing deals the banks aren't going to know that it doesn't help your credit but owner financing isn't really one of those situations where you're trying to build credit 
Owner financing is when you want to buy a house and take control of it quickly with little to no money down and sell it out to somebody on a rent to own and let them fix it, let them deal with it, let them own the house while you control the house. Owner financing is absolutely fabulous. Okay, so let's say um, you have this person and they don't wanna sell it because they know they're gonna have to pay a bunch of capital gains taxes if they sell it. So they say, I want you to owner finance it. Perfect, let's do it. Owner financing is the best way to go. So let's say that you're buying this house on owner financing for $30,000 and the house is worth 85,000. It's three bedrooms, two ba uh, three bedrooms, one bath, which is a problem. Everybody wants one and a half or two baths. That extra toilet really comes in handy. And as a woman, I can agree with that. I always want two baths. Even when we go on vacation, I want two full bathrooms. So it hurts that this house is only a three one. It's not totally undoable or it's not something that I wouldn't do because it's owner financing and we'll figure out a way around it. So we're getting it for 30. It needs a roof. Let's call the roof $10,000 on the way high end. More than likely we're spending about 5,000, but let's just assume something's wrong that we can't see and we're really factoring in Murphy when we say $10,000 for this roof. So all in, we have to spend $10,000 to get a new roof on it and we're gonna, own our we're gonna rent to own it, we're gonna lease option it back out to a tenant buyer for 85,000. We'll have them put 10,000 down, which covers our roof, and we'll let them make, see, see if we are making a $500 a month payment and we can get somebody in for $800, then we have $300 a month flow through, right? And it's not really risky to the seller because they're basically the bank. We are gonna pay them, we're probably gonna put a little bit of money down, maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand dollars down, or we can say, look, I'm putting a new roof on this thing, I can't give you any money, but the house is gonna have a new roof and you're gonna see that. In this case, my seller is letting me put a new roof on it and I'm not giving him any money down. So I'm making him $500 a month payments. Um, he did not want any interest because you have to pay interest you have to pay taxes on the interest that you collect, so I got an interest-free owner financing situation on just keeping my mouth shut because he already did his research, he knew what he was doing, he knew that I was the girl to call in town that could get this job done. So he's sitting pretty because he's got a deed and trust, he's got um, the mortgage paperwork because he's basically the bank, I have a mortgage with him, so he's totally safe, he's totally good on this. It's the same way that banks loan out money. It's not any more risky for the seller than it would be for Wells Fargo. And y'all know that that's how they make money, right? Is on interest that you're paying. That's it. So it's not risky to the seller. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful thing for the seller because it's a fast, easy way for them to get rid of a house and start getting some money in. My seller has a $500 student loan. So when I make my mortgage payment to him for $500, his student loan gets paid immediately and it doesn't have to come out of his pocket. Like he is really, really excited about it. And I'm really, really excited about it because I'm buying it for 30, 40 by the time Murphy comes into it and I get uh, the roof on. But I'm still selling it back out to the market for 85,000 on rent to own with somebody putting 10,000 down. Maybe, maybe they'll put more down and they're gonna be paying me 800 a month and rebuilding their credit. Um, if somebody moves into my house and they tear it up, they lose all their money and they're not gonna be buying the house. It's not a renter's mentality when you get a tenant buyer, it's a buyer's mentality. These people have bad credit, they've got to establish a job history, they've got so many things working against them in the world that when they get to me and they have a fresh chance, to buy a house that they really want in the right school district for the right price for less than they're paying for rent and they're building up equity in the house, they don't tear it up. Most of the time, I've only had one couple leave a house and they left because they found out they were gonna be able to adopt a kid who was in a wheelchair 
and they were going to split for your house. They had added two bedrooms to the basement of this house. So I had a three bedroom, two bath when I sold it to them. And when I got it back, I had a five bedroom, two bath in much better shape. And they were still willing to, you know, go for another house. They said, what else do you have? This one doesn't work. We'll put more money down on a different house if we can still stay in your program. So these people, they are so excited to get into a rent to own. They pay a premium to get into a rent to own. And I I did 14 houses in 14. I think I've only done like 12 this year. Um, and they haven't destroyed a house yet. So out of those 28 examples that I have, they've been wonderful because they feel like an owner at this point. Um, free and clear and high equity properties are best for owner financing, absolutely best. Like free and clear owner financing, you've hit the jackpot. Like go for it every single time that you can come across it. Um, so when I made my offer to the seller, in this case, it was real easy. He only wanted 30. He knows the house is in bad shape. He knows I'm gonna make money for it. There wasn't any real negotiation like this was a dream house in a dream neighborhood with a dream seller and I will have plenty of blogs and YouTube videos and examples off this one because this was a textbook seller like he was absolutely fabulous. They don't all work like that and I can do another owner financing deal where um, it wasn't as much of a dream and I had to do more negotiations. Um, I can cover that one probably next week. It's still a good deal. It's totally great. Thank you. I had to rush a little bit to get my hair done today. Um, but still, we built in about $20,000 equity into the deal. And when I close it out in March, I'm looking at a $20,000 check. So, owner financing works. Tenant buyers work. This whole rent to own lease option thing is absolutely fabulous. And if Jason's still on here, I'm not sure. He's the one that's agreed to marry me, <laughs> yay! Um, and he was completely against it. He could not imagine who would want to sell a house this way and who would want to buy a house this way when I first got started. And as I got into it and the floodgates just opened, there is an endless supply of people who would love to own or finance a house. And there is an absolutely never ending line of people who want to be tenant buyers, who want a rent to own. They need a lease option. They need somebody to work with them for a year or two so that they can go to a mortgage broker and say, hey, I've rebuilt my credit, I've moved to the area, I've established job history, I've been paying my taxes, I've got two years tax returns, I am ready to buy this house now, I love it. And in the meantime, they bought it for 85 and they paid it down to 75. And the house is worth still 85 because they've made repairs to it along the way. They've kept it up. They've made it look good. They may have added the bathroom. Make sure they get the permits if they're going to do that, though. Um, there's, a, there's legalities to everything. I have an attorney that I work with very closely who makes sure that my contracts are right, that my timeline is right, that my money ends up right. And you need to find an attorney in your area who specializes in real estate and really specializes in owner financing, lease options, rent to owns, that kind of deal, and let them guide you through that. Because I'm not an attorney. I am not comfortable telling you how to set up your paperwork, especially because you may not be in Tennessee or you may not be in my county. And it's just different. So you really need an attorney for that one. I'm not... I'm not an attorney and I'm not giving legal advice. Never, ever, ever. I found houses and I find people. I put them together and we make a happy little world. Um, okay, so next week I'm going to talk about a different owner financing strategy that I had to um, really negotiate hard on. And if you have, yeah, attorneys are great. If you have any delinquent, y'all ask me questions now if you want to. We're up to 15 minutes. Um, if you have any delinquent leases, uh, it just rolls over. It's whatever you build into your contract. You can charge them 10%. You can charge them a late fee. It depends on the Landlord-Tenant Act in your county and how many people live in your county as to what you can charge them. You can say uh, that you're late, and if you don't double down the next month, you're out. 
you lose everything that you put into it and you're done. Um, or you can you can do whatever your attorney says you can do, whatever the um, local county says, and you have to collect just any other way that you would collect anybody who is late on rent. Uh, I have one couple who moved into a house last September, and they put their money down. Everything was good. They made September, October, and maybe November's payment by the 5th of the month. Since November of last year, they have given me a check that's been post-dated for the 9th, the 11th, the 15th, whatever, and they include their 10% every month. They pay me an extra $150 just to be late. And I put their check in on the day that they say I can put it in, and it clears, and I can't do anything about that. They're paying their late fee. They give me the money on time, but they don't have the money in their account to cover it until whenever. I think I think in February of this year they actually paid on time, but every other month they've been late, and they've paid an extra $150. They pay $1,500 a month, and they write me a check for $1,650 every month. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. I go in to look at these houses, I'm thinking, it's going to take me so long to get somebody in here. And boom, the next week, somebody's moving in. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. I work in Jefferson County, Hamblin County, and Knox County right now. Um, and then the houses that I go in, I'm thinking, this house is perfect. There's going to be no problem getting somebody in here. Well, I'm up on my 90 days today on a house like that. We dropped the price. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, we... Uh, or Facebook, we dropped the price, I think, Tuesday night on the house, and now I've got three applications on it. So, it, it's the price. Either the price of the house that I'm talking about that I'm stuck on, it's either wrong, the monthly payments are wrong, or the down payments are wrong. And I'm really thinking it's the monthly payments. Um, so, there's some things you can do for that. You can get them to pay more down and less per month and use part of their down to cover the deficiency in the monthly payments. Um, I use the attorney to bring up the amortization schedule because I don't want to do that. That gets too legal for me. 2000 down and he's doing 10000 repairs for 1000 a month. That's great. Sounds good to me. Rock and roll. That 2000 just goes straight to you as a fee, though. It doesn't go towards the purchase price, right? I don't remember who said that. Um, also, our median house price is 150 Actually, our median is probably 125 Once you get above 150 the everything drops off. Everything just drops off. Like, if I had a $200,000 house, it just would not happen around here. Um, and it may be my marketing that I'm not attracting the higher-end buyers. Uh, I just know that I've really struggled any time that I've had anything over... Over 150, really. I mean, 165, eh. 175, eh. But 200, it's it's really difficult for me right here. And again, it may be me. It may be my marketing. Um, but if I can get something less than 100, if I can get something 125, we're good. Let's just go. Just rock and roll all day long. I got tons of people that are ready for. Five, ten, fifteen, or twenty thousand dollars. See, that's my auctioneer rattle coming through. You hear it? <laughs> um, yeah, put money down. Um, I get owner financing, and I sometimes will flip. But when you get owner financing, it's just like going to the bank. You actually take title. You own the house. You owe somebody else for the house. Yes, true. But you are the owner. You bought. You bought the house. Um, if you lease option it then you have control of the house. You have paperwork that you have filed with the local county people that says that you are in control of the house, you own the house, you have rights to the house. Oh yeah, New York City is totally different. I cannot compare to that. You'll have to just multiply whatever I say as numbers by, I mean, 10 or 15. I can't, I can't even imagine. But you're dealing with higher paid people and they spend more money than we do. I know, I see posts about people in New York who spend five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month straight rent for like a one bedroom. I, I, I 
can't I can't even compete with that. Like I have I have no no recourse with that. I have some friends that are auctioneers in New York and they do a bunch of tax sales in New York and they are fabulous and they like I want to be this girl when I grow up because she looks like she is just having the time of her life with her tax auctions and she does some other real estate auctions along and she does great. So my uh, friend in New York is my Oh, you're an auctioneer? That's fabulous. What real estate auctions? That's fabulous. Are we friends in on Facebook or Instagram? I'm Whitney Nicely on Facebook and on Instagram I'm Whitney Buys Houses. I also have Whitney Buys Houses on Facebook as a company page. Okay. We're at 21 minutes. That's entirely too long for me. I've got to go. I hope everybody has a great, great day. We'll talk about owner financing uh, with more negotiations next week. Uh, quick reminder, I'm getting married in October. I only do Periscopes once a week, Wednesdays with Whitney at 8 a.m. And, ooh, more real estate auctioneers. Yay! Um, maybe one day we'll talk about auctions, real estate auctions, because I love those. Um, okay, but I'm getting married, so no coaching in October. We'll start coaching back in November, and I am also not periscoping while I'm on my honeymoon. So we have two more periscopes before I disappear for two weeks, but I promise to be back and bring lots of good real estate tidbits from Hawaii because let's, let's just be honest, I'm not just going to sit on the beach while we're there. We're definitely going to do a little bit of house shopping, if not just for fun, then for research. We'll call it research. Uh, we're going to Hawaii. We're going to two islands. And Jason, I don't know if he's still on here or not, he has the plan. I'm just going. Uh, I know that we're going ziplining and we're going to um, a helicopter tour of a volcano and we're going night swimming with a manta ray. So I don't, I don't know. So yeah. Uh, I'm sure the Hawaii market is more like the New York market and I won't be able to really afford anything because my little brain, my little Tennessee brain, won't be able to calculate the payments. But also, I like right now in my career to be where I can touch things. And at, although I would love to be able to ride off a trip to Hawaii to be able to say hi to my properties, I am just not there right now, mentally. So, as soon as I am, we will all go on a big trip. <laughs> Maybe we'll buy some apartments there. <laughs> Alright, well anyway, bye. I've chatted long enough. I hope everybody has a great day and we're going to go out here with Abby the Labby now. Y'all have a good one. I will see you next Wednesday.